So we're presenting the results of our um, phase two clinical trial. Um, so this is a trial of off-the-shelf virus-specific T cells, and we're actually treating five of the most common viral infections after stem cell transplantation. Um, and viral infections are a pretty big issue in um, stem cell transplant patients, um, especially CMV, adenovirus, and also the K virus. Uh, they can make patients really sick. Um, they can cause a lot of pain in the case of the K virus, and um, they could potentially be life-threatening as well. And um, a lot of the available standard treatments we have um, either don't really work that well, um, or um, in some cases can cause significant side effects. They can actually threaten the bone marrow transplant itself in some cases, um, and then they can cause significant um, kidney problems. Um, so, so there's definitely a need for, for some alternative treatments. Um, so what we're, what we're using is some off-the-shelf T cells uh, from healthy donors. Um, so these um, are then characterized and, um, and tested extensively, um, and we infuse these into patients with viral infections that haven't responded to standard treatment or, or standard treatment is contraindicated for some reason. And um, we, were the first, we were the first to actually extend this approach to five viruses that we're simultaneously treating uh, with a single product. Um, so we're treating the viruses adenovirus, uh, CMV, EBV, and BK virus and HV6. Uh, we treated a total of 59 patients um, on our trial, um, and we essentially saw responses in, in the vast majority of patients. So 93% of patients um, did have a response, um, either partial or complete response, um, and in most patients, eventually this, um, this turned into a complete response. Um, and what for me was particularly exciting was um, the response in patients with BK virus cystitis. Um, so BK viruses can cause a really severe bladder infection, so you can get um, um, significant bleeding, um, you can get very severe pain, um, it's extremely uncomfortable, and it can last for, for weeks and oftentimes months, so where these patients are really miserable um, and um, have potential um, significant complications from this. Um, and what we saw with the T cells um, that um, most patients uh, in a relatively short period of time after T-cell infusion uh, reported significant improvement. Um, they had um, improved pain, um, less pain, some resolution of pain within a few days. And um, we saw resolution of bleeding in the majority of patients um, within two or three weeks. And um, these patients um, had a very good symptomatic response in a relatively short period of time. Um, and again, this is the first time this was, uh, was done um, in an off-the-shelf approach uh, for patients with um, K-virus-associated cystitis. Yeah, so anytime you infuse T cells, the most um, concerning thing to transplant is would be a possibility of graft versus host disease. Um, so of course we watch very closely for any signs of these T cells causing GVHD, and we didn't really see any significant GVHD. We had a couple patients who had uh, transient rashes, um, and those were in some cases classified as, as grade one GVHD, um, which is the mildest form of, of skin GVHD. Um, but all of these resolved um, very quickly, um, and um, all these patients did well. We didn't see any patients um, who developed any kind of new onset um, uh, moderate or severe graft versus host disease. Um, so that indicates that these cells um, seem to be seem to be safe. Uh, we did see a couple of patients with uh, fevers. Um, usually just a isolated fever. Um, and we did not see any um, cytokine release syndrome, which is something that you see with uh, some other um, T cell products like um, CAR T cells. Um, so we didn't see any, any um, moderate or severe cytokine release syndrome, again, other than, uh, than these um, isolated fevers. Um, so overall, this um, therapy seemed to be pretty well um, tolerated. Yes, we had 59 patients, um, but there was a varied variety of um, viral infections. Um, so we had uh, five different viral infections that we tested. Um, so obviously we would like to get more data um, for each of these viral infections. Um, there's actually a trial. So this um, therapy was licensed to a, a company um, some time back. Um, I'm no longer involved with the company, but um, I know that they're planning a phase three trial that is actually scheduled to open um, in the next couple of weeks. I think. Um, at the end of this year, um, where they're actually testing this in a randomized trial for the treatment of BK virus cystitis. Um, so, so I'm pretty excited about this um, trial, and you know, hopefully, they'll confirm what we've what we've seen in the phase two trial that this um, treatment um, is um, safe and effective. Uh, 
Um, so this trial is now closed. Um, so we're not planning to enroll any more patients at our institution. As mentioned, um, this product um, was licensed um, to a company by one of my um, lab collaborators and um, Anne Lean, who developed this um, product. And um, I think the company has a couple interesting trials in their pipeline, and um, they want to want to take this further and actually get it to the clinic. And um, I know it's been a little bit frustrating to to some physicians that um, that have seen these phase 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 one phase two trial results um, that this is not available in the clinic. Um, so we're hoping that uh, that in the next uh, next couple of years that will um, if the results are confirmed in the phase three trial that this um, product will be clinically available to treat our transplant patients. Mm -hmm.